Act Two of Warpin Wharf, a frightful comedy of pirates by Charles S. Brooks. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two. It is the same cabin on the following night. There is no thunder and lightning, but it is a dirty night of fog, as wet as a crocodile's nest and you hear the water dripping from the trees the duke evidently has had an answer to his now i lay me the lighthouse as before shows vaguely through the mist in this scene we had wished to have a moon the duke will need it presently in his courtship for marvellously it sharpens a lover's oath tis a silver spur to a halting wooer shrewd merchants i am told go so far as to consult the almanac when laying in their store of wedding fits for a cloudy june throws cupid off his aim what cosmetic what rouge or powder so paints a beauty if the moon were full twice within the month scarcely a bachelor would be left i pray you master carpenter hang me up a moon but our plot has put its foot down murk it says murk and fog are best for our dirty business we had wished also to place one act of our piece on the deck of a pirate ship rocking in a storm such high excitement is your right for your payment at the door it required but the stroke of a lazy pencil but our plot has dealt stubbornly with us we are still in the pirate's cabin in the fog we hear darlin singing in the kitchen as the curtain rises oh i am the cook for a pirate band and food i never spoil cabbage and such it sure ain't much till i sets it on to boil and i throws on salt and i throws on spice and the duke he says to me my darlin my pet i'm in your debt and he sighs contentedly there is a rattle of tinware patch eye sings the next stanza in the loft on the strand it's true i'm tellin to you the dukes and the duchess as well and they dines in state on golden plate eatin and drinkin like l that i says to you and it's perfectly true they stuffs theirselves too much and a buttons do when you gets it through is better than peacocks and such more tinware in the kitchen and now darlin again i've cooked in a brig to a dancing jig which the sea kicks up in a blast and my stove slid round until i found a rope to make it fast but i braces me legs and the duke he begs for puddin with sweets on the side me darlin it's rough and i likes your duff i'll marry you darling my bride in her reckless joy at this dim possibility she overturns the dishpan during the song the duke's legs have appeared on the ladder he descends fetching with him a comb and mirror he brushes his hair this is unusual and he finds a knot that is harder than any gordian knot whatsoever he smooths and strokes his whiskers he goes so far as to slap himself for dust he puts a sprig of flowers amazing in the front of his cloak he practises a smile and gesture he seems to speak he claps his hand upon his heart ha <laughs> my dear sir we have guessed your secret the wind as yet blows from the south but a pirate waits not upon the spring his lover's oath pops out before the daffodil i pray you master carpenter hang me up a moon and now the duke stands before us the king of smiles his is the wooer's posture he speaks but not with his usual voice of command oberon as it were calls titania to the woodland when stars are torch and candle to the sleeping world Arr, betsy betsy she appears the duke wears a silly smile but did not bottom in an ass's head win the fairy princess 
a moon sweet sir and now suddenly the magic night dissolves into coarsest day would you like to be the duchess this is abrupt and unusual but nice customs curtsy to dukes as well as kings i am asking here betsy your old duke is asking here i'm loving you your old duke is loving you i'll do the right thing by you i'll marry you there i've said it when you're married you can just sit on a cushion without nothing to do reflectively nothing cept cookin and washin and darnin does ye jump at me betsy i confess myself a mere man unable to analyse betsy's emotions she stands staring at the duke as you or i might stare at a hippopotamus in the front hall i have bitten my pencil to a pulp the maker's name is quite gone but i can think of no lines that are adequate her first surprise however turns to amusement ain't you kind o hankerin for me come to me arms sweetie and confess your blushin love i'm askin you i'm askin yer to be the duchess but i do not love you duke in jest however the little rascal perches on his knee make yourself comfortable your husband's willin when i cramps i shifts ye kiss me when ye wants you are an old goose did i hear ye do ye hold off for me to nag ye the old duke's waitin to fold yer in his lovin arms i do not love you duke the captain and patch eye have thrust their heads through the opening above the ladder and they listen with amusement i'm blowed i'm a better man than patch i'm tellin ye is it me stump betsy i hasn't a hook hand like the captain yer's gotta be linked all round there's no fun i says in bein hugged by a one-armed man yer'd be lopsided within a week it's just that i do not love you duke you wounds me feelings doesn't i ask you pretty should i have waited for a moon and took you walkin and perched with you on the rocks with the old moon winkin at you shovin you on the duke's never been refused before a number of very particular ladies after breakfast evenin has just come scamperin tain't patch is it betsy a pretty little girl wouldn't love a feller as has one eye it ain't the captain he ain't no hand with the ladies you're not tellin me it's peedy i wouldn't want you to fall in love with a blinkin light you have lovely whiskers duke you can pull one for the locket you wears are you makin fun of me i wouldn't dare does you mean it betsy are you relentin are you gonna see the happy word as splices us from keel to topsail you ain't just a cruel sirene are you wavin me on hopin i'll smash meself are you winkin at me like old flint's lantern me thinkin it's love i see shinin in your laughin eyes why don't you marry darlin her with one tooth you silly i booze at you old ladies with one hoof inside a coffin doesn't make good prides you'll want someone kind of gay and spry as you can pin flowers to she loves you duke course she does so does the old lady as keeps the tap at the harbour light and one-eyed pole as mops up the liquor that is spilt and youngsters too a pretty little dear just a cosy armful was winkin at me yesterday kind o givin me the snuggle up 
I pities em. It's their nature, God help em, to love me, that the old duke is particular. He has lovely eyes, Betsy. Blessed little mirrors where I sees Cupid playin. They shines like the lights of a friendly harbour. Darlin cooks roast pig that crackles. I sets me heart on top of me stomach. Ain't you comfortable sittin on me knee? Shall I shift you to me stump? Betsy I calls after we're married. Fetch me down me slipper and lay it on the hearth to warm your husband's home. And I tosses you me boot all mud for cleanin and then you passes the grog and after the second cup i limbers up and kisses you and then sits you on me knee it'll be snug on winter evenings when the blast is blowin and when we're married you can kiss me pretty near as often as you please and i won't deny as i won't like it the old duke ain't slingin the permission round general tarlin nags me what are you laughin at you silly old man you roils me once and for all will you marry me i'll not waste the night arguin with you i'm not gonna tease you i've only one knee and it ain't no bench for gealin girls as pokes fun at their betters i'll jolt you till your teeth rattles is it some one else has you got a prior attachment red joe is it red joe betsy is he snoopin round betsy rises with sobered mood and walks away there's something about that young fella i doesn't like he's a snooper betsy does ye get what i'm talkin about i have offered to make ye the duchess i'll boy i'll steal ye a set of red beads i'll give ye sixpence without no naggin every time ye goes to town just to spend reckless i'll marry ye i'll take ye to mine head and get the pious parson in the town would you like darlin for a bridesmaid and grog an angel cake me just sittin ready to kiss ye every time ye passes it i'm blowed you're wickeder than old flint's lantern it must be red joe him with the smirk there's a young fellow round here betsy as wants to look out for his wizen but betsy has run in panic to the kitchen i doesn't understand him i'm thinking the girl's a fool the ninny i calls her it's red joe off a cliff you said it darlin off a cliff he removes the sprig of flowers and tosses it into the fire rough winds do shake the darling buds of may and summer's lease hath all too short a date he retires to the rear of the cabin and strokes the parrot's head he jerks away his hand for fear of being nipped the ungrateful world has turned against him you're a spiteful bird you're as mean as women ninnies i call em it must have been the moon i should have waited for a moon he sits on the chest at the rear of the cabin and whittles a little ship women are a queer lot the captain and patch eye have climbed down the ladder they burst with jest the captain sits on the chair by the fire mimicking the posture of the duke patch eye perches on his knee darlin loves your duke course she does they all does youngsters too winkin and give me the snuggle up you're as lovely whiskers duke 
yer can pull one betsy for the locket that yer wears but the duke ends the burlesque by upsetting a chair the captain and patch eye chuckling at their jest sit to a game of cards the duke returns to the chest once in a while he lays down the ship and seems to be thinking the broken crystal of the fortune teller lies on the floor he picks it up and puts it to his eye as if the future may still show upon its face he is preoccupied with his disappointment and his bitter thoughts darlin meantime is heard singing in the kitchen with her dishes for griddle cakes i've a nimble wrist and i tosses em high on a spoon and the duke and patch you can hardly match for their breakfast they stretch till noon and i heaps the fire and i greases the iron and the duke he kisses me thumb me darling me dear it's perfectly clear i've loving you better than rum patch also sings she's cooked for sailors worn down to the bone till they rolls like the captain's gig at soup and stew we are never through but our favorite dish is big and she cuts off slabs and passes em round and the duke he takes her hand me darlin me love by the gods above you are cook for a pirate band and now darlin again me grog is the best it's made of rum and i stirs in sugar too and a hawk's head vast will hardly last a merry evening through and i fills the cups till morning comes and the duke he talks like a loon me darlin me life will you be me wife and elope by the light of the moon let all the tinware crash captain as he throws down his cards there i done yer you're a child at cards patch how ain't it that you never learnt didn't you ever play black ace the rusty anchor down greenwich way crack me up i've played with old flint himself settin in the little black room with something wet and warmin now and then just to keep the stomach cosy never stopped till phoebus's fiery eye looked in the winder poor old flint i never sees his clock up there but i drops a tear your cries as easily as a crocodile and you're as innocent as cards as as a baby biting at his coral a cooing little pirate it's frettin does it captain what's frettin yer it's what the old lady said last night she hung me to her gibbet just like old flint there's a gibbet captain on wappin wharf just around the corner from the sailor's rest does you remember it captain ah it makes your grog belt on yer captain to tease and frighten patch ay there was two sailormen hanging there when i comes in a year ago horrors just swinging in the wind and trying to get their toes down comfortable he has hooked two empty mugs and he rocks them back and forth just reaching with their footies to ease theirselves the old lady last night made me a wee bit creepy gibbets on wappin wharf ain't nothing ter talk about i never see a flock o crows but i ask their pardon for keepin em waitin for their supper crows patch is fun o yer as yer are without neither sauce nor gravy just pickin appy soup ter nuts at your dry old bones here's old patch they says waitin in the platter for his hungry guest ter come oh me stomach's turned keel up patch yer ain't got spunk to be a pirate yer as soft as peaty's pussycat i ain't ain't i wasn't it me as nudged the captain of the north star off his poop when he weren't lookin him with a pistol in his boot didn't i hit bill the bosun with a marline spike just afore he woke up sweet dreams i says and i tapped him gentle i got a lot of spunk bill didn't wake up he didn't wasn't it me captain that started that mutiny wasn't it me i'm asking yer still bragging o that old time 
It was more than four years ago. What you done since? Just load in your stomach, just grunt in and wallerin' in the trough, just bragging. I ain't afraid of nothing, except the gibbet. For a moment, the ugly word sticks in his skullet. Uh, but the old lady kinder got me. You look down your nose yourself, Captain, asking your pardon. Struck me, Patch. She was just a wee bit flustered by Red Joe. Did you notice how she sat and looked at the glass, and wouldn't say nothing? Just nothing at all. And then the old dear's fingers slipped, and the glass was broke. It looks almost as if she'd done it a purpose. The Duke has been thinking all of this time, with necessary contortions of the face. It is amazing how these help on a knotty problem. Course she done it on purpose. It was to stop me looking across her shoulder in the glass. What does you think she saw? Was it blood dripping? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. But he continues whittling. Wow. Ain't we listening, Duke? Just draining our ears. I'll tell you. I squinted in the glass myself. After it was broke. What, what did, did you see? see? There is intense silence. The Duke comes forward to the table. He taps his fingers sagely. He looks mysteriously at his fellow pirates. They put their heads together. The Duke sings his voice. In such posture and accent was the gunpowder plot hatched out. Nothing. Just nothing the strain is over they relax the duke he just seen nothing just nothing at all that's what gets me if the old lady seen nothing she wouldn't a took to fidgeting and therefore she seen something does you follow you captain i specs nothing from patch you hurt me feelings, Duke. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with Red Joe. Red Joe's a right smart feller, I says. He can shoot as straight as old Flint. Bear him myself. Joe's as straight as shot as I've seen in many a year. Patch in him is just a crooked stick. Pick on the Duke just once, why doesn't you? He's off, mates. Red Joe ain't gonna hang on no gibbet. Cause why? Cause I'm telling you. I'm telling you what the old lady seen in the glass. Once more the Duke draws the pirates around him. He is Guy Fawkes and the wicked Bothwell rolled together. We're listening, Duke. Like kittens at a mouse hole. Captain. It's just strange that Red Joe's ship, nary a stick of her, never come to shore. Does you remember a wreck long here, where nothing washed ashore? You're right, Duke, I never did. Does you remember one, stupid? I doesn't remember one this minute, Duke. Old Flint. He had a pigtail, didn't he? And you've got a pigtail, Captain, hasn't you? And Patch Eye, he's got what he calls a pigtail. Spinach, I calls it. And old Pew, he'd got a pigtail, ain't he? And every blessed man has sailed with him. I'm telling you, Captain. The sea cook, he didn't have one. Sea cooks ain't sailormen. They're swabs, just indoor swabs. Did you ever see a pirate snipped all round like a landlubber with nary a wisp behind? You can rot me keel, Duke. I never did. I agrees with the captain. Red Joe, he ain't got a pigtail. No more, he ain't. Wasn't it Noah, Captain, as 
got his pigtail cut by some designin' woman? Does your think Red Joe's gone and met a schemin' wixen? I scorns ye, ignorance. Ye thinks a Jonah. Well, well, I've told ye Red Joe ain't got a pigtail. Doesn't ye smell anything? Captain, as he turns his head and sniffs audibly, I can't say as I sniffs nothing, leastways nothing particular. I smells a bit of grog, perhaps. Uh, I gets a whiff of garlic from the kitchen. The two of you never can smell nothing when there's garlic or grog around. I'm asking your pardon, Captain. Does Red Joe talk like a pirate? Sink me. He can't rip an oath. Did you ever know a pirate which couldn't talk fluent? What's biting you, Duke? Ain't I telling you? Ain't we listening? Just hanging on your tongue. Captain, you and me and Patch has seen a heap of sights. We knows the ocean. We knows her when she's blue and when she's kicking higher than a gallows tree. We has been to Virginie. We has treated slaves at the Barbados. And doesn't we sit around the nights and swap the sights we've seen? Mermaids and sea serpents and such? Did you just once ever hear Red Joe tell what he's seen? You can sink me stern up with all the lights burning if i think that fellow's ever been beyond the isle of dogs what's biting ya duke it's just this red joe ain't no pirate he's a landlubber he says this as you or i might call a man a snake captain and now a great light comes to him he is proud of his swift perception he leans across the table to share his secret with Patch. I seem to get what Duke means. He's hinting, Patch, that Red Joe ain't a pirate. If he ain't a pirate, what is he? I ask you that. Duke, as he brings down his fist for emphasis. He's a bloomin' spy. A spy? He gives a long-drawn whistle as the truth breaks on him. If I thought he was a spy, I'd catch him right here with me dirk. I hate spies worse than empty bottles. I'd scrape him with me hook. I've been thinking, Captain, while you and Patch has been amusing yourselves. Asking your pardon, Captain, but cards rots the mind. Did you ever know a pirate that ain't drunk at the poor light on Wappin' Wharf? Not as yet, I never did. I never knowed a pirate as didn't have a double-barreled nose for grog. Well, when Red Joe comes in, we'll just ask him. And we'll ask him if he ever played Black Ace at the Rusty Anchor. It ain't no night to have spies about, with a royal owry coming on so pretty. And just getting ready to smash yourself. That innocent ship will be due in less than half an hour. If Red Joe is a spy, by the fiery bed of Satan, I'm telling you that dead men tell no tales. He lifts the terrible hook and claws the air. Asking your pardon, Captain, being as it was me as smelled him out, won't you let me slip his whizzin'? Or does it pretty, without mussin' up the cabin? I ain't askin' favours often, Captain, and I've particular reasons, reasons as touches me hard. For a moment he is almost sentimental. Reasons as touches me hard. Red Joe's been snoopin'. I loves you, Duke very much as i won't let you have and just to show you that i'm all cut up by this here snoopin when i'm dead i'll will you this old hook of mine as has scraped a hundred men 
he honours me, Captain, and if I is shovelled in first, me stump is yawn. That's handsome of you, Duke, and I'll not be jolly till a year is up, just like a widow. You touches me. I'll tie a black ribbon on your hook. At this pathetic moment, Darlin is heard singing in the kitchen. And I fills the cups till morning comes, and the duke he talks like a loon. Me darling, me life, will you be me wife? And elope by the light of the moon. There is a stamping of boots outside. The pirates put their fingers on their lips. They are innocence itself. The duke scratches the head of the parrot. The strange bird declines to taste his grog. Patch Eye shuffles the cards. The captain hooks the mugs toward him one by one for the last drops of their precious liquor. Red Joe enters. Also, Darlin from the kitchen. Hello, mates. Evening, captain. Aren't you cosy? As peaceful as old ladies with their darning. I've just come from seeing Petey up at the lighthouse. P says that long in about fifteen minutes the Royal Harry will be showing around the cliff. Is it time, Captain, to set up the lantern where she's useful? Isn't it? Did you hear that, Captain? Ain't it is what Red Joe means. Right you are, Joey. We must be trotting. What's the name of that tavern, Joe? That whoppin' wharf, where we gets the uncommon grog. Whoppin' wharf? I'm blessed if the name's not gone from me. The grog's nothing to darlings. What does ye call the tavern on the Isle of Dogs? I remember the rum. What's the use of looking at the signboard? How does ye sight to turn the bar at Guinea? Sorry, Duke. It was my watch below. I was snoring when we turned. What happened to your pigtail? Where does we ship the niggers? Ain't you got a mermaid on your chest? The pirates have risen and come forward. Their questions are put faster and with insolence. Dirk and Hook are drawn. Joe stands in an easy, careless attitude. He seems ignorant of danger. He has taken a coal from the fire and slowly, deliberately, with back to the menace, he lights his pipe. Then suddenly he drops it from his teeth. He leaps into action. He draws his knife, two knives, one for each hand. He kicks away a chair for room. He drives the pirates across the cabin. The candle, all the mugs upon the table, rattle to the stones. He cries out with bravado. Who offers me his carcass first? What? Is pirate blood so thin and white? The pirates stand with knives drawn. It is an awkward moment of social precedence. Patch, safe in the farthest corner. It's me, Patch, Captain. It's fetched loose. I follows you. Come, Duke, and take your answer. Have you no stomach for my message? For God, is there no black ram to lead a sheep to the shearing? Joe's is a dangerous gaiety. His two knives glisten in the candlelight. Scrape him with your hook, Captain. I follows your... My knife frets. It is thirsty for thick red wine. Who offers me his cask to tap? I'll pledge the king, although it is a dirty vintage. Come, Captain. I'll carry you to a dainty morsel. We'll have fresh meat for the platter. You'll not be known from scared rabbit flesh. He drives them round the table. Patch takes refuge behind the door. Darlin's red stockings run up the ladder. You bearded hound. He's taunting your captain. Hand him the hook. Duke and me is back of yer. They are fear to cheat the gibbet on Wapping Wharf. A knife's a sweeter end. Who comes first? I'll help him across the sticks. Or sink or swim. Or... Flint waits in hell for three whelps to join his crew. Captain, I'm surprised you're good nature. Scrape him one. I'll come to the barber first. Cowards! I'll ram your pigtails down your throats. I'll wash your dirt in blood. The Duke proves to be the strategist. 
he has edged to the rear of the cabin he circles behind red joe and now in a flash he leaps on him joe is buried under the three pirates for patch's valor returns when joe is down joe is tied with ropes and fastened to an upright at the chimney side this is the terrible glorious moment now that the fight is over when the actor manager as i first read the play as explained in the preface you really must read the preface turned his excited somersault down the carpet did you notice captain how i took him by the throat he was squirming loose when i grabbed him it was me tripped him captain i ask you a favour can i stick him now dead men tell no tales captain you just make a pet of the duke ain't it my turn i gets rusty let the duke do it he has more reasons than patch lay off me hearties doesn't you know we're in a hurry red joe is kicking up as wasted a heap of time the royal larry will be showing round the cliff any minute now red joe's safe he's tied up double we'll have a merry party afterward with grog and angel cake it's business afore pleasure here duke take the lantern he shakes it it's full of ile just stir your timber stump duke you can follow patch your follower's better than your elites some folks is pussy cats he's poking fun at you old lionheart you hurts me feelings i'll hurt you in a fatter place where you sits if you doesn't step along you're a lily-livered maggoty landfish i curbs me tongue i scorns you worse than cow's milk go along after i loosens up and tells you what you are in about two minutes that blessed eye of pity will go out we must set up the lantern before the royal Harry sticks her nose in sight bye bye joey see you later old angel cake yes just time to say now i lay me how's the night duke blacker than the earl of hell's top boots i'll just stick my apron on my head and go along too it ain't proper for a lady as has me tempting beauty to be left alone with snoopers the cabin is empty except for red joe he strains at his cords but is tied fast you hear the voices of the pirates singing in the distance i agree to this, this and to give them bliss from you i learned the trick, trick. i push, push him wide of the, the vessel's side and poke, poke him down with a stick. stick as soon as the pirates have left the cabin betsy enters she sees joe but passes him in fright she runs to the window and shields her eyes to see into the darkness god help the poor sailorman betsy betsy for the love of god suddenly the lighthouse light vanishes and almost at once the ship's lantern shows at the window to the left all sounds are hushed the ship's in sight i see her lights she has rounded the farther cliff i see her turning she heads in from the sea her three masts are in line she steers for the lantern god have mercy she'll strike in another minute she stuffs her ears and runs from the window i can't bear to listen i can't bear to look betsy betsy dear here margaret margaret at the sound of margaret she lifts her head buried in her arms she runs toward joe her wits seem dazed quick margaret margaret the knife that knife on the stone margaret cut me loose still dazed moving as if in a dream betsy picks up the knife she cuts joe's cords joe seizes the gun that leans against the clock he takes deliberate aim through the window he fires the window glass is shattered the ship's lantern is hit the light vanishes he replaces the gun betsy stands beside him looking in his face you've hit it thank god 
the light is shattered then after a pause i seem to remember now my name is margaret i remember what do you remember a great staircase a room with shadows from a candle and when i was afraid a lady sang to me and she set the candle so that the fearful giant upon the wall ran off and i was safe what else do you remember i remember margaret do you remember me margaret looks at him and a new memory is stirred yes i remember you were you not a great tall lad whose crooked elbow was level with my head and once we climbed a tower or do i recall a dream you held me so that i might see the waves breaking on the rocks below then with level eyes we looked upon the sea and cried out our discovery of each glistening sail are these things real one morning you mounted horse and i was held aloft so that you might stoop and kiss me you rode off with a clatter on the stones you turned and waved your hat and now you have come back you are hal we were playmates once and by luck and god's help we shall be playmates once again he puts his arms around her and kisses her quick hal you must escape quick before the pirates come follow the path to the village you can escape by the royal harry they are running to the door when there is a sound of voices on the path outside joe has just time to put himself in the posture in which the pirates left him the pirates and darlin enter in dejection betsy runs to the kitchen blast me the lantern's out brought me where there was an explosion poof and there weren't no lantern what done it what done it i asks ya they stand at the window and look toward the ocean she's still headed on her nose is still pointing towards the cliff what's that i hears the rattling of chains she's dropping anchor she has stiff a villainy her anchor's down she's saved hisself blow me she's saved hisself you can hang me to a gibbet you can rot me bones my heart's gone palby what done it what done it i asks ya at this point let us hope that the curtain does not stick End of Act Two Act Three of Wappen Wharf, a frightful comedy of pirates by Charles S. Brooks. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three The scene is the same as before we have given up all hope of a pirate ship rocking on the sea our plot still twists us around its little finger the curtain rises on the tableau of the second act old peaty shows again at the window to the right what done it what done it i asks ya just when everything was going pretty just when she was about to hit me heart near stopped i was that excited the pirates sit in deep dejection the mystery of this business is how the blinkin' lantern went out old peaty done his part he doused herself in time it was the lantern done it when there weren't no light at all the royal harry she just sniffed villainy and dropped anchor i was repeating smash your devil smash your devil kind of hurrying her on i was saying now i lay me throbbing with excitement it wasn't oil i put oil in the lantern meself captain you seen me put in oil i seen yer and i swished it meself to be sure nothing's been right since that old lady hanged me to her gibbet there he was watching pop and all of a sudden quicker and seven devils the bloomin lantern went all to pieces 
It's Grog, I says. Snakes is next. It were a comfort to the old captain to know that all you seen it. I seen a yellow rhinoceros once, running along with purple mice. All alone I've seen it, and it kinder sicken me or rum. Does you think the lantern exploded? Did you ever hear of a ship's lantern exploding? Oh, I ask you, Captain. You talk silly, Patch. That lantern has hung for twenty year on old Flint's ship, swinging easy and contented all round the horn, and it ain't never exploded once. Swab's lanterns explode, stupid. Ship's lanterns don't. Captain, I feels as mournful as when Flint's clock didn't tick no more, and we knowed he was took by the blessed angels. I ain't myself as gay as a cuckoo. Not quite, I ain't. Ever since that old lady... Lay off that old lady. They sit in silence, in dejection. All stare stupidly at the floor. For the moment it seems as if nothing more will be said, and the audience might as well go home. But presently the Duke sees something at the rear of the cabin. He looks as you or I would look if we saw a yellow elephant taking its after-dinner coffee in the sitting-room, but as he is a pirate, he is not frightened, merely interested and intent. He brushes his hand before his eyes to make sure it is no delusion, not grog or rum. Then he rises softly. He crosses to the window. Very gently he touches the glass. He finds it is really broken. He loosens a piece of the shattered glass. The others are sunk in such melancholy that they do not observe him. He gazes through the window, studying the direction of the broken ship's lantern. He traces the angle with his finger. The gesture ends with an accusing finger pointing at Red Joe. He whistles softly. For a moment his eye rests upon the gun, which leans against the clock. He has guessed the riddle. He advances casually, but with dirk in hand. He comes in front of Joe. Suddenly, he presses the blade of his dirk against Joe's stomach. Captain, Captain, quick, toy him up. Joe is bound again with rope. It's him that done it. It's Red Joe. How did he get loose? Duke, as he points to the knife on the floor. Does you see that knife? Does you see, Joe? I'm telling you, it was him shot out the lantern. Didn't I help to tie him meself? Asking your pardon, Captain, but you and Patch has the brains of a baby alligator. A stuffed rhinoceros is posolutely nothing arskin your pardon for speakin so plain i does all ye thinkin for ye there's some folks sittin here as are fat-headed and thinks ships lanterns explode easy now old dear you're always pitchin inter me cause i'm good-natured red joe i calls you a dirty spy a swab, a landlubber. For one copper fartin', I'll catch you one with this hook. It was me discovered him. I ask you, Captain, to leave Red Joe to me. I hates him most particular. Betsy enters from the kitchen. Did you call, Captain? Nobody ain't calling you, dearie. Now just toddle back into the kitchen. This ain't no place for a little girl. It'll give you bad dreams. Mince pies, nothing. Betsy attempts to leave the cabin by the door that leads to the cliffs, the door at the rear of the cabin. Where are you going, Betsy? I've an errand in the village. Well, you ain't going. It ain't no night for a little girl to be out. I ain't gonna have me duchess snifflin' with a cold. Go to Grandma. It was me discovered him, Captain. I'm askin' yer a favor. 
He's a snooper. Captain, I gets rusty. Lay off me, hearties. Duke, Patch, I loves both of you. I loves your equal, like two mugs of grog as is full alike. You can pitch dice to see which does it. He places the dice cup on the table beside the candle. The Duke and Patch take their places. Betsy, under cover of this centred interest, runs to Red Joe, who whispers to her. I drops em in me mug so they can get a smell o rum the little bones is me friends i never throws em less a five spot i makes a point to shake in the bones till they rattles jolly i likes the sound of it even better than the blessed scrapin of a spoon what stirrin grog ride it on me tombstone if i rots ashore he was the kind of fella as never throwed less than a five spot go long duke bones as is kept weight in sulks one or three one's enough i'm talking to you bones i want sixes sweeties as he throws betsy jostles the candle with her arm it overturns and falls the cabin is dark you can see her run from the cabin and pass the windows to the left now you done it you was all thumbs betsy easy mates it was just an accident betsy fetch a sea coal from the hearth betsy we ain't going to wallop you where are you betsy come out of your hiding i light this candle myself he takes it to the fire lights it and returns to the table there you are blazing like old p e you are burst it down betsy oh, crack me stump where is the girl kinder silly her to run away we ain't never walloped her women silly folks i calls em ninnies it don't do no good tryin to understand em now then old lion heart are you ready he throws two fives i've done ya patch it is patch's turn he kisses the cubes you're as sweet as honey tell me you loves me me dirk is itchin for your answer lux a lady is dotes on me he throws a pair of sixes does yer see it duke stick your brick and i right down again the table it's me captain he rises and draws his knife joey are you ready god if i were loose i'd take you by the dirty gullet and twist it until you roared i'd kick you off my path like a snarling cur what filth does nature sometimes compound a man shall a skunk walk two-legged to infect the air Three cowards will hang on wap and wharf before the month is up. Aren't meanin' us, are you, Joey? And I'll tell you more. Ain't we listenin' to you? You can talk spry. As Patch here has a leet old job to do, and it's nearin' bedtime. We doesn't want to sit up late and lose our beauty sleep just listenin' to a speech. A pirate takes his chance of death. Yeah, guard your dirty skins by wrecking ships upon the rocks. You dare not pit yourself against a breathing victim. Like carrion crows, you sit to a vile and bloated banquet. Dip me away, Captain, when you has heard enough. Stand off, you whelp. The King of England fights in France. Ain't you ashamed? He is not there to help. I'll tell you why I'm not in France. I swore to His Majesty that I would clear his coast of pirates. The plans are made. The channel is swept by gunboats. They will close in on you tomorrow. You and all the dirty vermin that befoul these cliffs. He talks so big, you'd think he was the king himself. Everyone laughs at this. The duke takes the cloak from the chest. In derision, he hangs it across Red Joe's shoulders. We'll play charades. Here's your costume, Joey. There, it fits you like the skin of a snake. 
We makes you king. You looks like you was paradin' in St. James's Park, lampin' at Duchess. Does your majesty need a new eye chancellor? I ask you for it. I wants a fine house in London town, runnin' to the strand, and peacock struttin' in the garden. King, I asks you to cast your gig on me. I'd be a right smart Archbishop of Canterbury. Me whiskers is ecclesiastical. I offers meself, King, as Lord I Admiral of the Navy. I swears fluent. Has your princess vacant? I looks graceful on the throne. The horrid creature spits. <laughs> Vast there, my hearties. I'm thinking I'm hearing the sound of footsteps. Duke to Petch. Did your lordship hear any sound? Asking your grisses pardon, I didn't catch a thing. Did you hear anything, princess? There's nothing come to me, pearly ears. Silence! I wants to listen. No sound is heard. Well, Patch, you're a better get your dirk ready. I'm uncommon sleepy. I wants to get to bed. Catch him a deep one, Patch. I takes it mighty kind of you, Captain. Yours allers been a loving father to me, Joey. I'll tell you what you are. You're the kind of feller I hates most particular. You're a spy. Say your prayers, you hissin' snake. He sharpens his dirk and gaily tests it on his whiskers. My wasted day is done, and the tempest rack. The stars are dim and face the only compass. Now or hereafter, what matters it? The sun will gild the meadows as of yesteryear. The moon will fee the world with silver coin. And all across the earth men will traffic on their little errands until nature calls them home. I am a stone cast in a windy pool where scarce a ripple shows. Life's but a candle in the wind. Mine will not burn to socket. He's all wound up like a clock, just ticking words. Patch, Joe is telling us where to go that his wick has burned right down to the bottle. You had better put it out, without more hesitating. And now as they are intent for the coming blow, suddenly, quietly, a woman's hand and arm, a claw rather, with long, thin, shriveled fingers, have come in sight at the window with the broken glass. It quite terrifies me as I write. My pencil shakes. Old ladies will want to scream. The fingers grope along the sill. They fumble on the wall. They stretch to reach the gun which stands beside the clock. Another inch and they will grasp it, and Red Joe will be saved. The arm rubs against the pendulum of the clock. It swings, and the clock starts to tick and still no one has seen the terrible hand and now the fingers are thrust blindly against the gun it falls with a clatter on the stones the hand and arm disappear but darlin has seen the swinging pendulum and shrieks does ye see it captain horrors it's never went since flint was hanged and wouldn't run till his dad's revenged and him laying peaceful in his coffin does yer think it's grog does all of you see it? What done it? From the distance is heard a long-drawn whistle. What's that? It makes me jumpy. It ain't a night when folks whistles just for cows and such. Finish your job, Patch. Are you feared of something special, Duke? Feared? If we ain't quick, there'll be a gibbet for all of us. Ain't the clock ticking peaceful? She ain't got no right to tick. It's like a dead man talking. Quick, give me the knife. I'll stick it in him. And when I've done, we scatters. Here's trouble brewing. Tomorrow night, when the tide is out, we meets at the hollow cave. And may the devil lend a helping hand. Snooper, are you ready? Does you see this here blade? 
shining in the candle in about one minute i'll be wiping off a streak of red round me breeks flint blessing your gentle soul you can rest in peace he approaches joe with upraised knife suddenly he cries out it's him the fortune teller mentioned it's the man in a velvet cloak it's him me god me hook with a growl of rage the pirates leap forward toward joe but are arrested by the sound of running feet into the cabin rushes the sailor captain followed by three sailors the sailor captain cries vast there and the pirates turn to face his men they put up a fight worthy of old flint darlin to escape the rough and tumble runs halfway up the ladder the table is overturned the stools are kicked across the room even the precious grog is spilled but the pirates valor is insufficient they are overpowered at last and tied red joe's cords are cut into the cabin betsy comes running followed by old meg joe hal thank god you are safe margaret i am the captain of the royal harry captain i charge you to arrest these men yes your royal highness royal highness did you hear what he said Han is nothing he's just a snooper she sits on the floor with her head on the duke's knee she is staunch to the last a true cook for a pirate's band you will transport them in chains to london to wait their sentence by a court of law yes your majesty you mistake me captain my father is the king of england i am but the prince of wales alas sir we bring you heavy news your royal father the king of england has been killed fighting gloriously on the soil of france bear with me my grief has leaped the channel my thought is a silent mourner on my father's grave shall a king sink to the measure of a mound of turf for the tread of a peasant's foot where is now the ermine robe the glistening crown the harness of a fighting hour the sceptre that marked the giddy office the voice the flashing eye that stirred to cower to bravery the iron gauntlet shaking in the pallid face of france oh all covered by a spadeful of country earth captain has calais fallen to our army siege are the french lilies plucked for england's boutonniere calais has fallen then god be praised even in this hard hour by heaven's help i throw off the idle practice of my youth the empty tricks and trivial habits of the careless years i renounce them all a wind has scoured the sullen clouds of youth my past has been a ragged garment stained with heedless hours to-night i cast it off like a coat that is out at elbow my father henceforth lives in me meg at her entrance has sniffed the wasted grog her nose surer than a hazel wand inclines above the hearth she bends to the lovely puddle she employs and tastes her dripping finger covertly with mannerly regard to the prince's rhetoric sucking in secret his good health and happy returns so to speak the liquor warms her tongue not to drunkenness but to ease and comfort the hearthstone is her tavern chair meg not boisterously with just a flip of her trickling finger as if it were a foaming cup hooray i wants to be the first your majesty to swear allegiance to your throne i saw your future in the glass oh magnolia like she had rocked yer in the cradle i told yer i would come in yer hour of danger it was me reached through the window for the gun to save yer it was me whistled at yer her dearie hurrying up the sailor men as betsy went to fetch thanks my good woman 
we grant you a pension for your love she quests back to her pool of grog she finds a spoon she sits to the delicious salvage with back against the chimney and woollen legs outstretched speeches to her are nothing now we cannot expect her help in winding up our play the burden falls on joe we must be patient through a sentimental page or two ah my velvet cloak which i left at castle crag when i laid aside the prince and took disguise these unintentioned ruffians by their dirty jest have clothed me to my office i swear my allegiance your majesty i rely on my sailors to clear the coast and seas but first i want your allegiance in another high concern some fourteen years ago when i was a lad of ten i journeyed with my royal father to the castle of the duke of cornwall which stands high on the windswept coast its giddy towers rise sheer above the ocean to the very rooks nesting in the battlements grow dizzy at the height it is the outer bastion of the world laughing to scorn the ocean siege in that castle captain there lived a little girl and she and i romped the sounding corridors together at once i led her to an open brazier in the steep-pitched wall and held her so that she might see the waves curling on the rocks below and tales of mermaids i invented and shipwreck and treasure buried in the noisy caverns of the rock but twice a day the greedy tide goes in and out to seek its fortune and far afield we wandered and stood waist deep in the golden meadows until the weary twilight called us home and i remember when tired with play that her mother sang to us an old song a lullaby her voice was soft with a gentleness that only a mother knows who sits with drowsy children and to that little girl i was betrothed I was sworn with oath and signature that some day I would marry her, and that when I became king of England in the revolving years, she would be its queen. By what miracle did you know me, Hal? It was the song you sang. Your voice was the miracle that told the secret. With unvarnished speech I woo you. I love you, Margaret, and I ask you to be my wife. Meg, faintly, floating in a golden sea of grog Hooray! joe takes betsy in his arms and kisses her the magic of your lips my dear is the miracle that answers me my loyal sailors i present you margaret duchess of cornwall countess of devon princess of the western marches by right and title possessor of all land twixt exeter and land's end and now by her consent and the grace of god the wife of harry king of england little betsy i forgives you i ask your help though our swings to-morrow and may you live long and happy we're loving you betsy my gracious lord for these three years this cabin has been my home these are my friends the only friends I have ever known. They fed me when I had no food, and they kept me warm against the cold. Must they hang? I ask you to pardon them. Glory to God! The pardon is granted. Captain, strike off their irons. We love you, Betsy. We are fonder of you than grog and singing angels. I thank you, King. It were just an hour ago sitting in that chair oh, i asked to splice your betsy keel to topsail the old duke never thought the countess of all them places and the queen of england a boot would ever be sitting on his knee pulling at his whiskers him asking her to name the happy day it was a prior attachment duke we'll serve you king like we served old flint top and bottom fore and aft we'll brag how the king of england and us has drunk grog together and how the queen washed up the mugs Hooray. and now captain lead the way we must speed to london good-bye duke some day you will find a girl who cooks roast pig that crackles a blessing betsy 
on your laughing eyes. A health to King Hal and his blushing bride. King, King Hal, little Betsy. With a wave of the hand, Joe departs, and with him, Betsy, who kisses her fingers to the pirates in farewell. The sailors follow. The pirates and Darlin are left. The pirates sit at the table. They exchange glances of satisfaction. They unbutton for a quiet evening at home. Kings are but an episode in a pirate's life. They return to the happy routine of their lives. Our adventure has circled to its start. Darlin', me friend the Duke is thirsty. You had better mix another pot of grog. You doesn't want to be a foolish virgin and get catched without no grog. Darlin', at the fire. You coddle your stomach, Patch. The Duke, he knows a little dear, as is just waiting to come fluttering to his loving arms. I think it's your whiskers, Duke. You can pull one, Betsy, for the locket that you wears. We is laughing at your old walrus. Kings is bigger than dukes. I looses with no kicking up. There's no one like darling for mixing grog. For that kind word, I'm loving you. She fills the cups. It's grog beats off the melancholy. As soon as me pipes go dry, I gets homesick for the ocean. Here we be, Duke, thrown up at the last to rot like driftwood on the shore. It was happy days when we sailed with old Flint on the Spanish main. Happy days, Patch. Happy, happy days. days. They lift their cups in memory of a golden past. It is a contented family around the evening candle. They are as cosy as old ladies with their darning. Meg snores in peace as the curtain falls. Our candles have burned to socket. Our pasteboard cabin is bare and dark. No longer do pirate flags flaunt the ghostly seas. The stormy ocean, the dizzy cliffs of Devon, melt like an unsubstantial pageant. Let's put away our toys, the timber leg, the patch, the frightful hook. Once again, despite the weary signpost of the years, we have run on the laughing avenues of childhood. End of Act 3 End of Warpin' Wharf, A Frightful Comedy of Pirates by Charles S. Brooks